today, our interview will be featuring Mr. Murillo. Um, for selfish reasons, um, because when you don't forgive, you fill yourself with hate, and that's such a destructive, as in self-destructive emotion, that you're, you're likely to cause greater harm to yourself than you would wish on the other person. Mm. Yes, you need to show perhaps some remorse. Uh, uh, some people are generous enough that they forgive even when that is not forthcoming. Uh, and that's pure grace, right? In, in the strict etymological sense of grace, gratis, right? They're giving you forgiveness for free, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but, but, but yeah, I think it's decent to do, to make repairs or to at least offer to make repairs. It, it, is, it depends uh, really on the nature of the offense. Uh, I used to slap my cat when it jumped onto my dining table. And then, uh, you know, I, I guess uh, it's a pretty minor offense, right? Uh, um, but, but I guess it's not the same to commit homicide, or it's not the same to cheat on your spouse, or it's not the same to lie. So it really depends a lot on the nature of the of the of the offense, right? Um, it's not noble per se, um, but sometimes uh, not quite revenge, but consequences for something that is not done wrong can be a favor to the other persons. I I think, for example of teachers and parents and people in charge of educating others, sometimes not out of revenge but out of kindness and mm, a sense of structure to the other person, you need to mark this is not appropriate, you know, X, Y, or Z behavior, so that the person does not repeat it with somebody who might be less graceful than yourself. Huh? So sometimes there's that tough love thing of kind of really giving um, children and youngsters structure. Sexually assaulting someone, selling materials illegally, such as drugs, killing. These are all further examples of poor actions made by the men in the powerful documentary and are similar to the actions from the characters in The Tempest, such as Prospero's power taken from him by Antonio, Prospero producing The Tempest, Caliban wanting to kill Prospero. These are all examples of bad decisions made. However, they are made in the past. All the unfortunate events which are featured in these two pieces of art explain the difficulty in finding a resolution if one is dwelling on the situation. With the act of forgiveness, in a way, the past is being realized and forgotten, and a new start is beginning to be born based on how you resolve the situation you come across. This is specifically what the essential question covers. Should one forgive the past in order to move on? In extreme cases, it's difficult to make a valid decision. Like, in mo most cases of the men in Shakespeare behind bars, they tend to forever live with the fury of others and rarely are faced with those who forgive them. On the other hand, the characters in The Tempest were able to further accept their challenges in order to change their future for the better. The act of forgiveness happens between two people, the one being forgiven and the one who is forgiving. This is exactly what the quote from the movie explores. The men cannot get out of jail without court approval. Prospero's enemies could not leave the island without his consent. And Prospero didn't want to leave the island without the audience approval. In a lot of cases, when you commit a negative action against someone, you are stuck with that guilt, unless that person you committed the action to was able to further release you from that guilt. Maybe the prisoners have forgiven themselves. However, there is more to being forgiven than just self-forgiveness. Just as Prospero was able to forgive himself, but needed the audience approval in order to truly feel satisfied. Here, I'm going to further explore different quotes from the Tempest regarding Prospero and his relationship with his brother, Antonio. Here are two parts from Prospero's story to Miranda on his brother, Antonio. First part. My brother and thy uncle called Antonio. 
I pray thee, mark me, that a brother should be so perfidious. He whom next thyself of all the world I loved, and to him put the manage of my estate. Second part, thy false uncle. It is fairly clear to see that Prospero is hurt and feels betrayed by his brother. With that, he is seeking revenge for his stolen power. This is a piece of speech from Prospero's epilogue, and it specifically illustrates Prospero's change in his relationship and behavior towards Antonio. Let me not, since I have my dukedom got, and pardon the deceiver. These remarks announced by Prospero, one at the beginning and one at the epilogue, portray and investigate Prospero's growth throughout the play, referencing his morals and his choice of forgiveness over revenge. After analyzing small parts of our play in regards to the big major theme of forgiveness, I've decided to split our essential question up into three different parts, when, how, and why. I've come to the conclusion that there's no right time to forgive someone. However, Prospero's choice to do so so soon made it more beneficial for his and his daughter's future. His decision to forgive all became the ending of all the surrounding conflicts in the play and amongst the characters. The forgiveness may sometimes seem somewhat selfish, so he doesn't have any self-guilt. After Prospero gives all his forgivenesses to his enemies, he turns to the audience and pleads for their forgiveness. Let your indulgence set me free. These words portray that he is trying to prove his worthiness as he has stepped up and decided to no longer choose the act of revenge. He shows this respect by giving up something he cherishes, his magic powers, in order to win their acceptance, and to leave the island. If Prospero was to choose revenge, there would be never-ending conflict, and he would forever live unhappy, as he would constantly be thinking about his enemy, or scheme scheming about revenge. With this choice of forgiveness, he is now royalty, and has provided a better future for him and his daughter off the island. Why is the Tempest a relevant play to contemporary audience? Although Shakespeare's stories are most definitely not based in modern times, and if not all of the stories would never occur now, through characterization and specifically theme development, Shakespeare is able to create a comfort in his writing in which everyone has a small part they can further relate to, or expand on. Like in The Tempest, there are multiple themes in which people can pick up on. Utopia, forgiveness, personal transformation, and beauty and monstrosity. With these themes, people can relate to them and then expand their knowledge on them, adding to their engagement in their story. Why is it that we continue to study Shakespeare? Although Shakespeare's most recent book, The Tempest, was written in 1611 and his writing is Elizabethan style, therefore different to what we commonly use, his plays remain timeless. Schools, students, and adults around the world of different ages are studying Shakespeare. This is due to his individual writing style and, and his extreme stories, which range from comedy to tragedy to the love and sometimes a bit of all at once. Overall, the study of Shakespeare, like any literature, helps you enhance your knowledge and appreciation of the different varieties of writing.